guys and welcome to lunchtime live i uh have a splinter in my finger so if you see me picking at my finger today it's because i can feel that i have a little uh splinter going on here and it's driving me crazy anyway i hope you guys had a wonderful week i have my laptop over here and in just a second um i'm going to see if i can hi elisa i'm going to see if i can access the live stream hi april and see if it does any better with the comments over here um it's still thinking there we go all right so weird looking at myself hi sarah nice to see you uh okay how can i can i get it to give me nope that's not what i want all right well, I'm glad you were able to join for a few minutes. Okay, it looks like I might have comments over here. We'll see. We'll see how that works. Okay, so for my show and tell today, I had to do a switch up because what I wanted to show you, they changed the shipping time on and it hasn't arrived yet. So um, what I decided to show you is a silk that I literally just finished um, like 15 minutes ago. I guess it was more like 30, but you get the idea, just a few minutes ago. And so I was gonna share with you. So there was this picture that I've seen several times and a couple of weeks ago, someone tagged me in it again. And this is just a great example of getting color inspiration from anywhere. And so this is the picture. This is, it's a wedding dress and it's got, uh, you can't, it doesn't really do it justice. But anyway, hopefully if I hold it at this angle, you can kind of get a, a sense of the colors. And so this was the inspiration. Oh, hi to your daughter too, Sarah. It's kind of, I'm gonna have to get used to being able to actually see comments and scroll through them. Look at that. All right. Um, anyway, so this was the inspiration, and this is how it came out. Dun, da, da, da. Look at that. It is gorgeous. Just telling you guys, this one is mine. <laughs> I was like, I am not parting with this. It's got a little static electricity going on here, but uh, isn't that glorious? I know, right? <laughs> yes, I know. I am so in love with this one. I'm just going to tell you. And so again, I just want you to see the inspiration so you can compare the two. So it really, it, it did capture sort of the feel and the colors. I actually made a new color. One of the things that I love to do is I love to, and of course, you know, it's pretty. I don't know if you can trying to move it where you can see it moving, but there really isn't space for that where we are right here. And I'm not gonna get up. So that's what you get of this. So that's my show and tell today, but um, <laughs> I, I, uh, I frequently will just blend my own new color because I like, um, I like making new colors. So uh, I created a new dark orange and I'm in love with it. It's like this gorgeous color. And for those of you who know me, you know I don't like orange. <laughs> general but i'm in love with this new color and the way that it blended with the golden yellow and that oh, it's just gorgeous so anyway really excited about that uh, that's so funny it does look like lightning through it it's i use a couple of different dyeing methods and so i was very specific in which method i used with this one and um and so it's what creates sort of that really cool texture so i'm really excited about that so all right, let's see. Ah, oh, I love the fact that I can actually see comments. I'm gonna have to remember that I can see comments. I'm so used to not having them. All right, so um, let's see, what else do we have on the list today? I kind of don't totally know where God's going, and I know that I showed you this one once before. I think I hit this, because that doesn't look like it's over as far. I know I've showed you this silk once before, um, or one like it, but this is the Glory of the Throne Room silk, and this is one of our painted ones. Becky did an amazing job. It has the winged creatures from the throne room on it, as well as uh, several other elements, and it's just stunning. And so we actually, um, this was commissioned, I'm gonna share the testimony next. Um, this was commissioned by a woman who, um, she is 78, she uh, is a dancer in worship and had not danced in worship for, I think she said it was like three decades. And God put on her heart that it was time for her to be released back into the dancing again. And he gave her this vision for these flags. 
And so she contacted me and she had like, you know, kind of these pictures and this very nebulous idea. And so we sort of prayed through it with, you know, a couple of members of the team, including Becky, who does the painting, because she knew that she wanted, you know, some elements actually painted on the silk. And so we, we collaborated back and forth with this and what came forth was just absolutely stunning. And when we did it, God also created um, a prophetic portrait for her as well, which is the art piece this week. And actually, let me pause and show you that. And it's called Throne Room Glory. And so this is it. And it actually has, whoop, come on, let's see if it'll, there we go. It actually has elements of the painted silk hidden in it so just above the crown you can see one but all four of the creatures are actually hidden in there you've got Heber on there as well and so anyway so that's the art piece that goes with it and so it's all interconnected and she was super blessed by this I mean and and so here's a shot of her with the flags oops come back here you and so you know here she is after just finishing her dance and it went beautifully and we actually have video she's done it a couple of times now we have both videos shared in the um the blog post on died for you uh that shares her with it but she said these are just a couple little quotes my heart was so touched i was literally speechless it's absolutely beautiful um she went on to say my heart is pressed by a weighty awe i'm literally speechless this is the most beautiful anointed flag set ever. Amazing talents and prophetic gifting. So she was super blessed by it, which is really cool. Hi, Amber. Hi, LaShawn. Some more people have joined us. Hang on, I gotta remember to... Oh, Greta, I'm sorry to hear that it's breaking up. We've been having internet issues for like a month or so now. It's really frustrating. Ugh. Oh, no. Okay. Apparently I'm freezing up on everybody. I'm so sorry. All right, hang on. I'm just catching up on comments, guys. All right, guys. I'm so sorry that the connection is being so finicky. Oh, that's horrible. I don't know how to fix that. Um, well, I'm just gonna keep going and hopefully you guys will catch the gist of it. So anyway, so that's kind of the testimony. She was super blessed by these. And so I'm gonna share one of the nuggets that goes with the art piece. Um, but the whole topic is kind of connected to this because the, the three links that, I, actually I'm gonna talk about those first real quick. The three links that I wanted to share are um, ones that are part of what was birthed here. Some were part of the silk, some were part of the artwork, but um, the first one is uh, called Experience the Throne Room. And basically this is a word that's reminding us that he's extended an invitation to us if we are willing to go. And so um, it's a good reminder and it's beautiful. The word is beautiful. And so I hope that you'll take a moment to go look at that. The second, the second link that I had for you is called The Glory of the Throne Room and the Value of His Presence. And this is reminding us like, this is a precious gift. And just because he's made it readily available to us does not somehow decrease its value. And so we really need to make sure that we don't, you know, sort of let, let familiarity breed contempt, but we really have to value, um, you know, the, the, the fact that he allows us to just sort of soak in his presence like this is a gift and so we really need to put the value on that that it warrants and then finally the last one is um, called throne room experience and this is actually one that was reposted from waiting in the wings <clears throat> and the the part that was highlighted to me in this is is in the final paragraph she's talking about the fact that we that we cannot help but be changed we are, when we are in the presence of the Lord. And so there is such value for us in, in finding time to sit with him and, and the changes that that brings forth and the life that that brings forth. It is worth our time, it's worth our effort. And so that's part of the reminder there. So hopefully, hopefully those three links will end up blessing you if you take a moment to go look at those. And um, thank you, Elisa, for uh, sharing those. And I know I stuck the link. The link I gave Elisa is the one on the Died Free Ministries blog, but post the one from, from Waiting in the Wings when you post it uh, <clears throat> too, because I want to make sure people follow you because 
the uh, her blog is such a blessing and so okay all right I'm just keeping tabs on what's happening over there ah okay hold on a second it logged me out so I don't have the nugget pulled up I had it pulled up it disappeared on me hold on one second logging back in I'm having all kind of technology issues today, aren't I? All right, let's do this. So come here and give me the preview. Thank you very much. Okay, so the, the nugget that I'm gonna share with you guys today is called Come and Know Me More. And this is out of uh, Psalm 18, um, verse 11 and 12. And this is out of the Passion Translation. Wrapped and hidden in the thick cloud darkness, his thunder tabernacle surrounded him. He hid himself in mystery darkness. The dense rain clouds were his garments. Suddenly, the brilliance of his presence broke through with lightning bolts and with a mighty storm from heaven, like a tempest dropping coals of fire. And the word he gave me is this, Beloved, I cloak myself in glory and mystery surrounds me. And yet I beckon you closer and welcome you into my presence. I am power and authority. My holiness radiates from my presence. Come and know me. Come and know me more. Be reverent, but also be bold. Know who I am, but also understand who you are. Move past any seeming contradictions and simply choose to know me. Choose to pursue me. Be undone in my presence and overcome by the radiance of my glory. And so again, and I know that we talk about these topics a lot, but there's a reason for that. And Pursuit of him, okay, I'm totally not seeing comments anymore, so I don't know if that's because no one's leaving comments or because I'm having internet issues. So I'm hoping, I'm hoping it's the former and not the latter. Um, okay, at least it's moving again. I, I think what's slowing down the connection is probably the fact that I'm running the live stream next to me while I'm talking to you so that I can see the comments so I'm probably making it worse for myself hmm maybe I wonder if I can pause this for a minute um, I'm gonna go ahead and pause this for a second because I want to see if that makes any difference if that's what's causing it because um, that would be really lousy if I was making my own connection slower. So I'm, I've, I've closed it down over here. Nope, it didn't close it. It's over here anyway. All right, anyhow, sorry. <laughs> Woo, squirrel, actually kitty. There's a kitty outside the window, which thankfully the creature on the floor next to me hasn't noticed yet. It's his uh, favorite foe. He loves to bark at her from the window. Um, so, Pursuit is one of those topics that we've brought up again and again and again. And the reason is that in this day and age, it is way too easy to stay distracted. We all know that. I'm guilty. I live on my phone. So many of us do. You know, you, you can't help it. You're doing business on your phone. You're keeping tabs on your family on your phone. You know, we're constantly connected and there's always something there stealing our attention. And, you know, I was... I was a little challenged by this because I saw a post and someone was talking about, you know, being distracted when you're in God's presence and be, you know, pulling your phone out and are you really like, why are you doing that when you're there? And, and of course, like I journal and document what he's saying on my phone. So I, I do always have my phone with me when I'm in his presence, but it's not because I'm trying to be distracted. But if I'm honest, you know, that does happen. <laughs> You know, it's very easy because, you know, a notification will pop down or something. And so it's very easy. And if you think about that, how does it feel to you when you're with somebody that you really care about and you want their attention? And how does it feel if they're constantly looking at their device? You know what I mean? If they're constantly like I've just been doing, right? Because I'm sitting here trying to check for comments, see if the technology is working. And so I'm constantly, you're not getting my full attention. I'm going, you know, I'm doing this. And then I'm like, oh, oh yeah, you're still here, right? And so, but yet we do that to the Father. We do that with God and our time with Him. And so we, we, are, we are choosing to be distracted in our pursuit of Him. And so we have to find a way to 
allow ourselves and give ourselves the permission and find the time to simply literally just unplug and just trust that he wants to spend time. Like for me, I have to trust that whatever he wants to download to me, he knows how to download it to me in a way that I'm going to be able to remember it. I don't have to get so over eager to where I'm like, no, I have to have my phone with me to document this moment. Like he knows, like he wants to just fellowship with me and he wants to give stuff to me. And so being able to find that balance so that you're getting to enjoy that time together because he deserves our full attention. He deserves our wholehearted pursuit. That's the way he pursues us. And so to not ever reciprocate that is doing him a disservice and is not expressing back to him the love that we actually have for him. And so it's kind of like with our families, it's really easy to sort of take for granted that they're still going to love us and take for granted that they're still going to be there and take for granted that, you know, they're going to understand when we're on our phones and when we're distracted. And the fact of the matter is they, they do, but you're still sending a message. And so really, you know, being intentional with the message that you're sending, I guess, is really at the end of the day, what I'm trying to say here, because it's not that I'm saying don't be on your phone. It's a bad, evil thing. I'm not saying that. I love my phone. I, you know, I use it for so much good. I mean, not trying to be funny, but the, the daily downloads from heaven, the book that so many of you guys have enjoyed and have given me awesome feedback on that entire thing was written on my phone. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and, and so, I mean, obviously like a lot of life can come forth from these devices. Like you can use them for good. They're a tool. So they're not inherently bad or good, but you have to be intentional in your use of them. And it's too easy to become addicted to that sense of, you know, connectivity and, and something happening. And we become sort of these adrenaline junkies where we want something to happen and, and we want the chemicals that our body releases when we get that happy feeling because somebody texted us or whatever. Like we have to, we have to make sure that we're being intentional in our use of it. So anyway, that is what I wanted to share with you guys today. And so I'm going to switch to prayer time here, but I am going to pop over here real quick and try to see if, um, if we have any comments. I don't know whether that helped uh, things run a little bit more smoothly when I had it turned off or not. Hi, Nikki. Welcome. Um, all right. It looks like it still is being difficult even when I had it off. Well, shoot, I'm sorry, guys. Well, if you have uh, prayer requests, now is the moment to share them. Um, I think I'm actually going to uh, try and cheat and go under under my new silk because I like it so much. So I just kind of want to wrap myself up in it. I don't care that it's a flag. So uh, for those of you who missed my show and tell earlier, this is my pretty new one. <laughs> so Father, first of all, we just thank you right now. We thank you um, for the blessing that this technology can be because even like right now that we're able to touch across the miles and come into agreement and encourage one another in our faith. Father, we just thank you that it can be used as a vessel for good. But Father, we also just pray that we would have a sense of balance, that we would not let it mandate our lives, but rather that we would make intentional choices to be present with our loved ones, with you, with our, with our human loved ones. Father, that we would just be intentional and not just allow ourselves to just go from one hectic moment to another hectic moment to another hectic moment, but that we might find our quiet with you. Thank you, Father. You're so good. You're so good. Father, we want to be pursuant of you in a way that, that demonstrates the faith and the love that we have for you. We don't want our actions to be... Um, to belie our, our words. We want them to, to, to portray the same message, Father. We need that even for our families as well. Father, help us to have wisdom. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Father, help us to be intentional to choose you, to choose time with you, to not allow familiarity to breed contempt, Father, to understand your value, and then to allow ourselves to be changed in your presence, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And may you be just glorified through our lives. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You're so good. Hallelujah. 
Father, I just ask right now that for anyone who is struggling with illness, Father, we just pray for healing right now in their bodies, in their minds, in their spirit, Father. Thank you. Hallelujah. You're so good. You're so good. You're so good. Father, we just thank you that you are the God of more than enough. So we know that everyone here has every need met. We just thank you for that right now. Father, and in the moments where it feels like we're, we're lacking, Father, let us not become accusatory towards you. Give us your eyes to see the situation. And Father, we just ask you to just show yourself true. We trust you. We trust our lives in your hands. You're a good Father and you love us. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. 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 Well, I'm not seeing any other prayer requests right now. I'm not sure if that's because it's cutting out. Hi, Maureen. It's nice to see you. I'm not sure if that's because I'm cutting out still or whether that means that nobody has shared any, but just know that I will look at them later. Um, and that I am agreeing in prayer with you and just sending hugs and blessings to each of you guys. And I will be back next week, 1 p.m. lunchtime live, hopefully with a better connection. God, please pray for our technology issues. <laughs> it feels like we go from one to another. Anyway, love you guys. Have an awesome week. And in the meantime, happy worshiping. Bye, guys.